Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I'm so excited that you're here today. Today is going to be your questions answered. A few weeks back, we hosted an Ask Me Anything virtual Amazon event where y'all sent all your questions in and I was able to answer them, but there were so many questions that were, remained unanswered because I couldn't get to all of them in within the time frame allowed. So I wanted to do a bonus episode to make sure that a lot of your questions would still be answered and you guys could get the answers you need to move forward. I don't want you to be stuck. I want you to be moving forward every single week. So please make sure that you're tuning in. But I have a couple announcements for you. First, if you're not in the Mommy Income Facebook group, you need to join us, mommyincome.com slash join us. This is your code word for all of you who come to the Facebook group and you don't have a code word. There's a code word in every episode. So listen to an episode, listen for the code word. Here's the code word this week. It is answers, hashtag answers. That is your code word to be able to get into the Facebook group. Now, I have a couple of brief announcements. Number one, if you're interested in a workshop, yay, the workshop in Las Vegas is happening. ASD is opening up and we have rescheduled the Las Vegas um, workshop for coming up. And it's the end of this month. It's July 30th, the August 1st and 2nd. You want to make sure July 30th, July 31st, August 1st and August 2nd. That's going to be um, in Las Vegas at the ASD show as planned. If you want a seat, there are a couple seats left. A couple people couldn't attend. And so there's a couple of openings. If you guys want to grab a spot and get your, um, get a seat to the workshop, you want to make sure that you come and do that. Mommyincome.com slash workshop. I am so excited. It's about time I get to see people and talk to people and teach them about bundling. And I'm so excited about that. So if you want a seat to the Las Vegas workshop, I know it's coming up in a month, but you know, get your, get your bundling ready. It's going to be so much fun. And I know that, you know, with the virus and everything else, everyone seems to be worried, but if you are ready and willing to come to Las Vegas, there's a few seats left. Mommyincome.com slash workshop and you can go and find out more about workshop seats. And one more announcement, the Q4 Jumpstart. This is like the fourth annual Q4 Jumpstart live class that I'll be teaching. If you are just learning to sell and you haven't been through a Q4 season, I've got something really special. I love the Q4 class every year. I get super pumped up about Q4 every year. And the Q4 Jumpstart class is awesome. You know, um, For years and years in a row, if you're a first Q4 starter or you had a, a mediocre Q4 last year and you're just not sure, the mega holiday season is coming up and with COVID and everything else that's been happening, the, the reality is more and more people are going to be shopping online, especially for this Q4. It's going to be bigger than last year because honestly, people are a little bit intimidated still about going to stores and large public places where there's people everywhere. And so more and more people are shopping online. To register for the Q4 Jumpstart class, mommyincome.com slash jumpstart. It's happening at the end of this month. It's going to be amazing. There will be a replay if you can't come live, but there it, it's going to be live. Mommyincome.com slash jumpstart for the Q4 class. Uh, if it's your first Q4 or you kind of had a mediocre Q4, this is perfect for you. If you got a few Q4s under your belt, you probably don't need this class. It's more for people just starting out and you want to just kill it during Q4 this year. You got to get a head start on your competition. Everybody else is chilling out, laying by the pool by now or going to the beach and just being lazy during the summer. You need to be ready for Q4. This is when we prepare. I've already sent in all my wholesale orders. It's not too late, but I've already sent in wholesale orders. I've been doing this a long time. I want you guys to be prepared for Q4. So mommyincome.com slash jumpstart to register for that. All right. We are going to quick fire. This is quick fire questions. This is questions from you that you guys submitted. I'm going to read who sent it to me and answer your questions. And I'm going to go rapidly. So if you need to slow it down a little bit, if you need to write this stuff down, get some answers. Now's the time to be able to do that. Of course, you can always listen um, a couple more times just to get the answers that you need. So I'm going to rapid fire off these questions as fast as I can to get you guys the answers that you need. Okay, he saying says, does your course videos provide captions? No, there's no captions, but there are full transcripts for all the videos. So if you have a hard time listening, understanding, or English is your second language, or you just struggle in that area, um, you know, whether it's hearing problems, whatever it is, there's full transcripts available for the wholesale bundle system. So make sure that you um, are aware of that. The transcriptions are in the download section and you'll be able to um, read all of the things and not just listen. 
Sarah says, how do you translate a bundle's performance? How do you fix it? Low ranks, not many reviews into potential sales. So the number one thing, Sarah, that I would do is I would tweak your keywords or tweak something one at a time. If a bundle's not performing the way that you expected it to, there's definitely different ways to troubleshoot. Number one, I would definitely be looking at keywords, making sure that you're ranking for the keywords that are the most important to your listing. So making sure that, you know, you, you know, you can use Helium 10's index checker, or you can put your ASIN in um, the search box with that particular keyword to make sure that you're coming up in the search results and I would be tweaking keywords first. If keywords aren't the problem and you're indexing for everything, make sure your competition, what does the competition level look like? If you're ranking, but you're on page six or seven, um, you know, what can you do to boost your ranking to get up to that? Number one is action on your bundle. Even if nobody buys it every day, visit your bundle listing every single day. And that just means typing it in, looking at it, giving it some action. Um, that's just another way to troubleshoot that. Sometimes Amazon's algorithm picks things up and down and they don't really know, um, you know, they, they don't know until you get sales, they don't really know what's relevant in your listing. And so sometimes they choose that for you. So one of the things I would do is um, check that. Also ask for reviews. You can use um, some sort of feedback service to, you can't directly email your customers um, through Amazon system, but um, things like Feedback Genius or something like that, if you wanna get more feedback and ask for reviews, it's fine. Take the good with the bad though. If you ask for reviews and someone's not happy, they'll leave you a review all right, but it might not be a good one. So you want to make sure that like if you're asking for reviews that you're, you know, you got to take the good with the bad with that. And I don't have many reviews on my items, but I still sell through a lot of them. Um, sometimes people don't want to leave reviews. They don't like to, it doesn't matter, but I just want to make sure that you're aware that you need to take the good with the bad when you're, you're asking for reviews. Um, and then finally, finally at the end, after you've done all these other things, if your bundle's still not selling, look at price points, look at whether or not your price points are um, on target. You do not have to be lower than your individual items sold together, but you have to be competitive in the space. So everything has a price threshold. And if you get on a price threshold that's too high for your particular um, item, you know, people are going to look at that and say, oh, this is $59.99 and everything else is $35 or, you know, vice versa with 20 versus 10. Like you don't want to be double somebody else's price when, when everybody's got different things. So make sure you do that. But price is always last. So make sure that you pay attention to that. Debbie says, how do you get a bundle to rank? Now, when you say rank, does that mean on page one, how do you get your keywords to index? How do you get your keywords to rank? Um, making sure that you're paying attention to your listing, that you have all the keywords, that you're indexing for all the keywords. If you have a live listing, again, double check your indexing and look at that. Another thing is to have a friend or family member, someone not associated with your Amazon account, just buy a test bundle just buy one to see if that ups your organic rank in search at first. Now, if it's anything associated with an address that you have or a friend or family member like that, um, I'm not suggesting false reviews. I'm not suggesting anything black hat. I'm saying that, you know, bite the bullet and sell one to somebody somewhere and even, you know, give them the money to buy it just so it gives it a little bit of a boost. That tells Amazon your keywords are correct. Someone's searching for this product. They found your product. They bought it. So all of a sudden it changes the algorithm for, for them to say, if you're selling a coffee mug and someone buys your coffee mug by typing in to, you know, cute dog coffee mug or something and they find your item and they buy it, it tells Amazon, hey, this person looked for a coffee mug. This is the item they bought. These keywords are relevant for your listing. Until you get those sales, Amazon just guesses and you have to rank organically or you can use PPC. I, I don't recommend using PPC if you do not understand what you're doing because you could spend a ton of money wasting a ton of money trying to get sales for your item. So making sure that you pay attention to that. Jackie says, what is the best way to get ungated? The best way to get ungated is to um, open a wholesale account with a company in a product or category that you want to sell in. When you want to sell in that item and you want to get ungated, you buy at least 20 units of one item, perhaps two or three items. Yes, it's going to cost you money to get ungated. Pick something in that particular vendor's catalog that is offered on Amazon. And when you submit your 
application for that particular category and you submit your invoices and you show them make sure all of your items your personal identity type items your store name your address that you gave to amazon all of those things um, or whatever business you registered in at Amazon, make sure that all of those things match. If, you know, Susie B um, buys something from a wholesale vendor, but then the, none of the names or addresses match, Amazon's gonna think that you just copied that invoice off of the internet, like they don't know. And so they wanna make sure that it's a legitimate invoice, that it's in your company's name. An actual photo of it is better than an uploaded PDF because a PDF, they think they can be altered. If you're literally taking a photo of something, they can actually see that it hasn't been altered. I would do both just in case. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Um, making sure you order two or three items, show them I would like to be you know, unrestricted or I'm applying for approval for the category. A lot of people call it ungating, which is what the lingo is, but it's requesting approval to sell in specific categories. So if it's the toy category, you buy at least 20 of maybe a couple different toys that are on Amazon and you can show this is the ASIN, this is the product I plan to list, here's my invoice from a legitimate wholesale distributor, and then oftentimes that gets you ungated. You might have to try two or three times because sometimes they just send canned responses back to you and they're a pain and you just have to, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So making sure that you, you do that is really important. How do I, ha um, Manny says, how do you handle sales tax? I'm handling sales tax that Amazon is collecting from all the different states and remitting them on your behalf. This is something for a tax professional. I am not a ta tax professional. Um, I submit um, taxes in the state of Michigan because that's where I reside, but then I also, Amazon collects sales tax on my customer's behalf from all the other states that they're required to do so and submitting that on my behalf. So there's not a need to have to do all that yourself. If you are interested in a service, mommyincome.com slash tax jar, they can help you out there. They are tax professionals, e-commerce tax professionals, and they will be able to help you either with a subscription service or something like that. That just makes it a no brainer for you and you don't have to do a lot of the work. So for sales tax info, contact your CPA and make sure they're knowledgeable about online and e-commerce. If they're not, find someone who is because you don't want somebody who thinks they know what they're doing and then they have no idea. And we've had nightmares of that happening. It happened to Amy not too long ago, a few years back and just like a super struggle. So make sure they know about e-commerce, e-commerce tax, Nexus, things like that. If they don't know what Nexus is, run for the hills. They need to know that. So um, mommyincome.com slash tax jar will help you with that. At least you can read some of their blogs and get information on that. Susanna, what is the best site that supports keyword searches? Okay, so my two favorites are Merchant Words and Helium 10. Uh, Merchant Words is um, just awesome. I've loved them for a really long time. Um, Merchantwords.com slash mommy income is where you'll go there. And see what that's all about. And then um, Helium 10 has amazing keyword research, but Helium 10 is awesome. It just has a lot of bells and whistles and there's a lot of tools. And if you don't watch the tutorial videos, you're going to get very confused about what's happening. So um, it's just really, I mean, it's, I'm, not very tech savvy, y'all know that all the time. And so it's taken me a long time to really learn the processes of that. However, um, Bradley Sutton from Helium 10, their head trainer over there, um, was in the Amazon Files Hub membership community giving us an exclusive training to our people. So if you're interested in that training, um, that's in the Amazon Files Hub, mommyincome.com slash hub to learn more about that. But he did an exclusive training just for the Amazon Files um, members and learned a lot about how to use Helium 10 specifically for bundling. Um, that is, and it's also it translates it into a listing, cert, like the scribbles that they have. It is really cool. Um, and he shows us kind of how to do that in the video and it's really neat. So check that out if you can. Okay, Rhonda asks, how do I find reasonably priced wholesale items? <clears throat> I love this question. I laugh at it because um, the truth is it's tough. It's tough. Um, there's a, with it specifically selling on Amazon, if you had a brick and mortar store that you were buying wholesale from for your brick and mortar store, everybody knows that like margins are thinner, but you don't have all the crazy fees. You have overhead, you probably have employees to pay, you have rent, you have things like that. So different 
strokes for different folks. If you've got a building and you've got to pay a lease or anything like that, then you have different fees. But on Amazon, it's really tough to compete with single unit wholesale items because number one, Amazon has some hefty fees involved. I love Amazon. I love their fees because of what I get for those fees. But the reality is, you know, they're, they're in the 30% range. So you're going to pay 30% upfront to Amazon to sell the item. So if your margin is only 30%, you're breaking even or losing money. You don't want that. Um, the reality is that, that wholesale, depending on what category, it is a very thin margin. You're going to have to mark it up quite a bit. The good thing is, is that Amazon buyers tend to pay more for things because they know they're paying for convenience. They know that they don't have to, um, you know, go to us, get in the car, go to the store, pick out something, bring it home, all that kind of stuff. They know they can add it to their cart on their phone and it arrives in a couple of days, <laughs> Lord willing, and they don't have to do all that. So they're willing to pay a little bit more for stuff on Amazon because they don't have to do the work to find it, get it, bring it home, whatever it is. So there is definitely a premium involved. So don't think that you have to always do that, but it's also very competitive. Everybody wants a piece of the Amazon pie, right? The way to get around that is to use bundles because if you bundle things together, then you don't have to singly list something and, and take pennies on the dollar to be competitive. You can actually make decent money using bundles because you can bundle complementary items together to increase your margins. That's one of the reasons I created wholesale bundles to begin with because I was seeing really thin margins and a lot of competition on wholesale stuff and it was difficult. But if you're struggling to find wholesale items, or wholesalers that are willing to do business and not everybody has the right prices. So keep looking. This is, if this was super easy, everyone would have a mega list of all the things and all the best things to sell. And then everyone would take the prices and there'd be no comp, there'd be millions of competition. So pay attention to that. Mommyincome.com slash 100. That's the number 100. You can find wholesalers using that method and find more wholesalers. So keep looking. If you found one catalog that's not doing well for you and there's no margins or you feel like there's no margins, consider bundles or move on to someone who has better markets. Denise wants to know about drop shipping. <laughs> My very quick answer is don't drop ship on Amazon. Number one, it is against their terms of service unless you have inventory on hand. On hand doesn't mean it's down at Walmart and you can go get it and have it drop shipped from Walmart to your customer. It does not mean wait till you get a sale, then try to order it from something, then cancel the sale because you don't have stock. Amazon exclusively says you need to have stock in order to send something. The problem is people want their stuff. And if they place an order and then all of a sudden that order's canceled because you realize your dropship company doesn't have that, just be very wary of drop shipping. There's a lot of courses out right out there right now waving this get rich quick banner and it's easy and no inventory and blah, 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 but it's not. It's difficult. There's a lot involved with drop shipping. You have to find the inventory that's worth the money, list it on, on for sale on other sites. Don't do it on Amazon. Like read the terms of service. It tells you you're supposed to have inventory on hand. Most people don't care about that. They'll do black hat type things with drop shipping. The reality is you less and less control over the inventory means more and more problems for you to handle. More refunds if you try to do drop shipping and something doesn't get there right or tracking numbers don't come in. If you are doing Merchant Fulfill on Amazon and you're drop shipping, you have to provide tracking. If you don't provide tracking, they'll give instant refunds to anyone who requests it because you didn't provide tracking. So if you don't have tracking, there's that element. Then there's also advertising off of Amazon. If you don't have products that are already on Amazon to sell, drop shipping is complicated. It can be expensive when it comes to refund rates. You don't have control over who's shipping when and when it's going to get there and communication levels, you know, I don't think it's worth it. That's my personal opinion. I don't think it's worth all of the headaches that you have to manage in order to do it. They're that's just my opinion. Also read terms of service on Amazon. It's really clear that they don't want people drop shipping because they want people to make sure they have inventory on hand. Linda asks, how hard is wholesaling? It's not hard at all. Wholesaling is not hard. You have a legitimate business. You have a reseller's license or you have a sales tax certificate. You can call up any company that distributes products for wholesale and open an account with them. Order products drop them off at your house, prep them for Amazon, send them in. The, the hard part comes in with researching the products to find ones that are going to bring you profit. 
And that's there. There's research tools out there. You can use something like Helium 10. You can use the Amazon Seller app. You can use Inventory Lab Scout to be able to use all these different things to help you research. People use tactical arbitrage, all these different things. But the reality is you're going to have to pick products. You're going to have to do the research and you're going to have to find what profit zone is important to you. But wholesaling is just, it's just not hard. It's signing up with a company, looking at their catalog, finding out what's profitable and that's where the work comes in right this is not get rich quick this is work real work and then going in and doing it that way so that's something that you need to be able to pay attention to and um it's it's not easy peasy and whatever else getting started is easy getting catalogs i have piles of catalogs it's the research that takes the longer time i prefer to do bundles because there's more I found more profit in bundles. We need to put two or three or four things together that make sense, that are highly complimentary. People are more apt to buy this bundle at this great value that increases your profit margin. So just think about that as well. Katie asks, what is the best way to narrow down your search when looking for bundle ideas? So vetting the, the ideas that you have are, are part of the wholesale bundles framework. So if you don't have that framework, you're going to want to get it. Um, Katie, the framework, this is just like a little piece of it. If in case you're watching, if you're listening on the podcast, you can't really see it. It's the 12 step program, <laughs> 12 step program. I know we always laugh at that 12 step framework process that we use in order to validate your bundle ideas. So when you're narrowing it down, you want to look at supply versus demand first and say, okay, there's a ton of these out there. There's not a ton of these out there. And this is where the research tools come in and you see the numbers like merchant words or helium 10 or something. And you see the numbers on there and you say, oh, I can decide to do this. Um, this looks like a good bundle and narrowing down your ideas to one niche at a time, maybe one catalog at a time. And then if you've got five or six ideas, then it's a supply and demand thing. Which one has the lowest amount of supply with the highest amount of demand? And look at those particular products and then build bundles around those. Deb says, do you still offer one-on-one -on -one coaching? Would it be beneficial for someone who already took your workshop and are seasoned sellers? Hello, yes, I do do that, Deb, and I wanna make sure that you know mommyincome.com slash coaching. You can go to that and learn more about one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. I think anybody at any level can benefit from coaching. If you have questions that need answers, if you need clarity, if you need more explanation, no matter what level you're at, ask for help. I still ask for help, you guys. Did you know that? I still look to mentors and coaches to get answers that I don't have answers. Because guess what? I don't have all the answers. I have a lot of answers for Amazon, but I don't have all the answers. And so you need to reach out to someone. And honestly, if I don't think coaching is a good fit for you because you're too advanced or you're not sure what you need clarity on, I'll tell you, I don't take just anyone and everyone. I want to help people that want to move forward. And so making sure that you do that. So Deb, schedule an appointment. We can talk about that and you can even email me and let me know um, what you need specific help with. And I'll let you know whether it's a good fit or not. I mean, that's just, that's how it goes. Steve D asks, with the pandemic and unemployment being at an all-time high, is it a good time to be an online seller? Yes, yes, and yes. Here's my two cents about the pandemic. It's not political. It's not anything else. It's just being in e-commerce and retail for a really long time. E-commerce has done nothing but grow since the pandemic started because everyone was locked up at home. Not everyone. Most people were locked up at home, quarantined, trying to keep away from the public so that people aren't spreading the virus all over. But do you think people stopped buying stuff? No. They turned to Amazon. They turned to other e-commerce websites. They, they bought stuff. They just bought it online and had it delivered. So I think e-commerce is going to be bigger than ever. As a matter of fact, my sales are, are showing that and reflecting that right now. People are buying more and more than ever. Things that, that were moving really slow before are moving now because everybody's turning to online. The people that maybe didn't even have Amazon Prime then started signing up for Amazon Prime because they realized I can't just go to Home Goods and buy what I wanna buy at Home Goods. I can't just go to Target anymore. Why? Because these places were not open. If they were open, you had to do all the procedures or if you have health issues or anything like that, 
you didn't want to risk it, where did you go? You got to buy product online. It is bigger and better than ever. And now is a really good time to start. But let me tell you something right now. Don't jump into Amazon thinking you're going to capitalize on the pandemic. You're going to sell masks and hand sanitizer and all that stuff. No, no, and no. People have gotten sued over some of this stuff. So don't jump in thinking you're just going to be on a pandemic bandwagon. Amazon's restricting a lot of that stuff. So instead, come to the table learning and knowing this is a great time to be an online entrepreneur. Why? Because I already work from home. Pandemic or no pandemic, not a whole lot changed. So thinking about those things, I think it's a great time to be an online seller and start because it's doing nothing but growing. People are getting busy, shopping's not a priority, or they're, they just don't want to deal with virus issues. And so if they order online. Anne says, do we need to create packaging for bundles and what is the best way to do that? One of the best ways to do that is to, first of all, figure out, um, yes, I think it's important at some point for you to create custom packaging for your bundles. Create your bundle brand and then create, you know, when I say bundle brand, it doesn't have to be something sexy. It's not this worldwide brand like Target or Apple that you're going to be um, you know, putting out into the world. It's just a bundle brand that you're going to use to bundle your stuff. Use something generic, use something that kind of crosses over to all kinds of different products. I mean, we have bundles from grocery to baby to health and home care to, to home goods, like all these different things. So um, our bundle brand is all encompassing so that it doesn't matter if it's in a baby category or in a grocery category, it still makes sense as a brand. So like think about Target's brand up and up. That's their like generic brand. Um, I would think about that as like thinking of thinking about what you want to name your brand so that it's kind of generic enough to cover multiple categories on Amazon because you don't want to have something that says Kristen's auto parts and then you're selling granola bars and it just doesn't make sense so get pick something generic and then create custom packaging if you want custom poly bags like super fast um, within a week I mean they're they're I don't know, maybe a dollar a piece depending on how you pick them depending on your logo but go to mommyincome.com stat slash sticker mule and you can get poly bags in a couple of different sizes printed uh, and actually printed on it your logo your whatever your name um, and they will get it to you in about a week so mommyincome.com slash sticker mule you'll get like 10 bucks off when you first start and you can have 50 poly bags printed and just see if that works for you it's your brand it's your name on it and it's something that's fast and quick that you can show Amazon as well if they want your branded packaging um, they work really well over there and I love sticker mule not only because I love stickers but because they they do really well um, at that and the poly bags are amazing I'll, I might do another YouTube video just to show you some of the stuff that they produce that you can put on your packaging because it's fast and easy there are other ways too in the branded packaging um, training that we have in wholesale bundles it's part of wholesale bundle system now is the cust creating custom packaging for your bundles it's a whole separate training but it's included with wholesale bundles now so you can take that as part of the training as well it comes with the wholesale bundle system so you can you can take that whole training and learn how to do more of that there what's the best way to find wholesalers for bundles um go to mommyincome.com 100 and watch the trade show stocking video go to trade shows get catalogs talk to representatives um just be brave enough to do that and asks what are the startup costs for fba okay this is real brief um, there is a video on a YouTube channel about how to start Amazon for $500 or less. It's probably one of our most popular videos, but here's the rundown. You're going to need, you know, if you, if you don't have to, if you've never started on Amazon, um, start FBA today is a great course to take. It's kind of an overview. It will get your products into Amazon. It will help you learn how to source products just to get started and doing all that. That's $97. Um, then you're going to want your $40 Amazon fee, probably another 40, 50 bucks for inbound shipping for your first month. So we're up to like 200 bucks at this point. Um, a few supplies, maybe you can spend $50 to start with to see if it's right for you. I would say um, between three and $500. You wanna be able to have some money to buy some inventory to test out, an inventory that's actually good to test out. You might break even when it comes to your first month or so on Amazon, but you're learning a process. Once you know how to do this process, then you know how to do it and you can spend your money on inventory. So I say $500 is a really good benchmark, but if that's a stretch for you, $300 will cut it. Um, the Start FBA Today course tells you exactly what you need, what you need to buy, how to source, things like that. Um, 
startfbatoday.com. You can learn more about that there. Kim asks, I'm struggling with selling my own branded products. I've tried Facebook ads, FBA, um, PPC, and other types of promotions. What is my best next move other than selling, like what are the other selling tactics. The, to be honest, I really don't know other than that is a really, really hard space to be in with your own vitamins and supplements unless you've built your brand outside of Amazon and you kind of have a following. Um, people tend to buy those types of products from brands that they're aware of, the brands that they know. So, you know, Nature Made and some of these natural companies and stuff like that, like nine out of 10 times people try to buy something that's brand recognized. They want to make sure it's not some cheap dollar store knockoff or something. And so it's a, it's a trust factor when it comes to um, vitamins and supplements. And so that's just my two cents about that. And my, it's very competitive space. So either a create a bundle with those and bundle those around a specific condition um, be careful of FDA regulations because depending on what you say, you can't promise you can like cure diabetes with something, but you can say vitamins and supplements to support diabetic health or something or keto or whatever it is and, and put two or three um, vitamins and supplements together as like a pack or a set or a bundle um, and see if they do well there, but make sure it's super niche focused. Like um, if it's keto, if it's, you know, for children, if it's for hair and nails, whatever it is, putting two or three supplements together in a combination to help a specific condition, I think will really help you there. Lisa asks, do I ever have concerns regarding suspensions? I really don't. I don't have concerns about suspensions because number one, I don't do retail arbitrage anymore. So I don't have to worry about infringing on anyone else's intellectual property rights. I don't have to worry about inauthentic claims because I'm not selling anything inauthentic. And if they try to say that I am, I have invoices from distributors and wholesalers up the wazoo that I can prove that my stuff is legit. Number two, um, intellectual property rights. Um, I'm not selling anybody else's big branded stuff where they would want to come after me. So I've mitigated all the risk by doing things with brand registry, my own trademark, my own bundles, so that I'm not worried about all the suspension stuff that goes on out there in the world. What gets you suspended is not following rules, doing black hat things like um, drop shipping or trying to copy and paste everybody else's listings, jumping on someone else's branded products, trying to sell something you're not authorized to sell, trying to skirt around the rules obey the rules and you can make money on Amazon and they're not just gonna, you know, they don't come down with the grim reaper, you know, hatchet on you and say you're dead just because they're mean. You know, there's always more to the story. If somebody says they got suspended for no reason, they're lying. There's always a reason. And so the reality is like big, bad Amazon. Yes, they have rules and policies. And a lot of times they're, they're not always as fair as you want them to be until you can prove your case. So the best practice is to make sure that you're you're not doing anything backdoor, black hat, trying to skirt around any sort of rules. Just do what you're supposed to do and do what they're asking you to do and you should be okay. Kelly asks, how do you get your ideas for what to sell? This is a really important question and it's fun. Number one, I always tell you to start with your knowledge bank. So everybody has knowledge about something. I'm a type one diabetic, so I know about things like you know, this is my, the, for, for y'all that don't know, it's funny, I have this thing on my arm, it's a continuous glucose monitor. For those of you guys on YouTube, you can see it. If you're on the podcast, you can't see it. But if you see me in person, you'll see me wearing this on my arm. And I use this little device to scan it and it tells me my blood sugar number. And I'm just doing this live because why not? And, and it tells me what it is so that I'm aware of that. But if you can see, I've got a cute little sticker on it because um, why not? You know, they sell these stickers on Amazon. So somebody knew the marketplace of diabetes and realized we're gonna have these little devices and we wanna make them pretty because I mean, plain black, that's boring. So I got this little flower sticker of mine and put it on there. And I also have a sticker on my thing right here because why not? I have to wear this ugly circle thing on my arm. I might as well make it pretty with a sticker, a little decal. So know your niche. Like everybody has a knowledge bank. I know about type 1 diabetes. So I know what kind of products and problems to solve for my type 1 diabetes customers. So I can put bundles together that would really make them happy, make their life easier. Solve a problem for your, your people. You have a knowledge bank. In the Wholesale Bundles course, number one, there's there's a 
test your knowledge bank. There's a brainstorming activity where you can sit down and do that. If you don't have the wholesale bundles course, take that course so that you can learn exactly what to do with the brainstorming. That's how you get your ideas. And then from there, you see bundles being sold, you realize what's going on and you, it kind of steamrolls the process. Everybody knows something about something. And so start with your knowledge bank. Okay, next question is from Katrina. How to scale up your Amazon? How do I scale up my Amazon business? How do you scale up? Number one, slowly, 80-20 rule, right? So whatever you're doing now, continue to do that 80% of the time, but then change the 20% of your time. So say you spend 20 hours a week um, doing retail arbitrage, or maybe you're doing private label or wholesale straight up. Continue to do that. Continue to do what's working for you. <clears throat> but also add 20% of something new. So if you're gonna try wholesale bundles, for example, then like four hours out of that 20, you wanna to dedicate to something new, learning something new as far as that goes. There's two things I did, three things I did actually to scale my business. Number one is I changed my business model. I used to do retail arbitrage a long time ago, um, at least over five years ago. And I realized that I couldn't scale at that level. We were, it was my mom and I, business partners. That's number one, what I did to grow. I hired help but I also changed my business model. I realized that I couldn't do retail arbitrage forever and I basically just built myself a prison, a job. It's a basically a job that I had before, um, you know, like an entrepreneur job, but what I wanted was a true business, something that I didn't have to have my hands in all of the cookie jars for it to work. So changing the business model was helpful. We, we started doing um, wholesale and then we added bundles and we slowly weeded out retail arbitrage and now are fully wholesale bundles in our business model. We do occasionally, I do some thrifting and retail arbitrage, but mostly it's for um, eBay and not for Amazon. Amazon, I stick to my wholesale bundles. Why? Because they work the best. So number one was switching up your business model, slowly adding new things to the new business model ideas to the marketplace. I highly, cons highly consider wholesale, specifically wholesale bundles, where you're going to get the most profit and most bang for your buck. Number two, hire help, hire help, hire help. You cannot, nor should you do everything by yourself. When you're in the beginning and you're in the trenches, yeah, sure. I did it for a lot of years, way too many years by myself. Um, and it was overwhelming. It got to the point where I was working 24 seven. I didn't want that kind of life anymore. I wanted the income was nice, but then I was working for every dollar. One point uh, when I was working for so long, I did like a, a dollar per hour type thing of what I was working for. And I was like, ashamed. I was like, why am I only making, you know, $18 an hour, which for some people is like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. But like for all the stuff that I was doing and all the numbers that were coming in, that just didn't seem like what I really wanted to focus on. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Um, I took on a 50, 50 partner and I took a pay cut doing that. So that was my mom back in uh, 2014 or so. But then as soon as we took that dip, it didn't take very long for the two of us to do what one of us was doing. And, you know, pr probably about three or four months or so where, you know, my paycheck was half of what it used to be. And then all of a sudden we started to skyrocket. Why? Because two heads are better than one, four, four you know, two sets of hands, two sets of eyes, two people doing all the different things that was really helpful. And the third and final thing that has allowed me to scale to the seven figure level was hiring a prep center. So for a long time, we did everything in-house, even when I took on my mom and we actually hired some teenagers and some other people to help us out, even our friends and family. But at some point we realized we're outgrowing this operation and we either need a warehouse or we need to hire some sort of prep company to help us because we can't continue to receive this level of inventory at our home. So we outsourced all of that and we go to myprepcenter.com with Nathan and Bridget. They receive, bundle, package, and ship all of our inventory. So we no longer have inventory in-house. What does that do? That gives me location freedom. That gives me time freedom. That gives me a way to, I can run my business from anywhere in the world that has Wi-Fi. So I place the orders. My mom and I place the orders. We choose the bundles that are going together. We communicate with the prep center. We have everything shipped there. They handle it from there. And it's really just a la laptop lifestyle. No, we still do real work. But the reality is we don't do as much of the work in the business that we used to because we've outsourced a lot. I also have a personal assistant um, admin that helps us with all of our Amazon tasks and a VA um, 
our assistant is kind of a VA as well. He's the admin and he, I mean, he works remotely as well. We're not in office very often. Maybe we meet together once every couple of weeks if we need to, but then we have a VA from the Philippines. She does all of our back end Amazon work as well. Hire help one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself with that. If you need prep and pack help, consider a prep center. Um, if you want to hire someone in house to do some things for you, um, consider that on a 1099, consider a VA to do some tasks for you. Get stuff off your plate. You will never grow to a level of really comfortable income without hiring help. Like Apple doesn't run with one employee. Like the reality, I mean, not that y'all want to be as big as Apple, but the reality is like you have to learn to grow and hiring help and changing up your business model that's going to suit the lifestyle that you want sooner than later. Okay, Les asks, why am I being charged when Amazon delivers late? Ha, you shouldn't have to be. And although they charge that because they don't have any other way to bifurcate the system, you need to reach out to them and get a reimbursement. So anytime it says that there was a refund due to a late delivery, you open a seller support ticket, you copy the, the order number and you say, I would like my fee reimbursement back for this you know, refund being late. I shouldn't have to be charged for a mistake that you made. Please reimburse my account this amount of money. And almost all of the time, especially if it's a late delivery on their part, they won't give you a refund if you don't ask for it. They'll just let your money be gone. And so pay attention to your own account. This is something our VA does on our behalf because we don't have time to chase down hundreds of orders that Amazon either screwed up or delivered late or didn't get us back to our inventory. Your money's your money and you need to chase after it. So getting your reimbursements um, from Amazon, you have to ask for them. Okay, what, what do I do as far as diversifying my income? So Jen asks, do I do, you know, how do I diversify and split my in inventory? For example, with bundles, wholesale RA, is it 50, 50, you know, 25%, 25%. Okay. So we are probably 95 to 99% wholesale bundles. We do a few one-off wholesale items only because we actually found products that are profitable. Most of the time when we were looking into wholesale, um, we don't find margins big enough to sell single unit items. It's the reason why we do bundles. Um, I would say retail arbitrage is like less than 1%. I don't really do retail arbitrage anymore. I don't feel like it's safe for my business. I don't feel like it's a long-term business model. And although I get the treasure hunting itch that some of you guys get, I do that weekly with eBay. So I, I still sell actively on eBay on a regular basis. And I love the idea of treasure hunting at yard sales and thrift stores and estate sales to sell stuff on eBay. And I have a really large store going on with that. And that's where I get my itch for like the treasure hunting kind of making like, you know, buying something for a quarter and selling it for $75. Hello, just now during this episode, my daughter is also an e-commerce seller at 17 years old. And she bought a pair of Nikes for 10 bucks uh, at a yard sale this past weekend and already flipped them for over $90. So there's real good money in it. That's for eBay. For Amazon, I like to do the wholesale bundle route. I don't really diversify my business model. Now, what do I diversify as far as my actual inventory? Now, there's definitely a split there. So um, I have some home and kitchen items that, uh, that in, as far as categories go. I have baby I items in the baby category. I have toy, uh, toy items that we sell in bundles. Um, and a little bit of like industrial and scientific. It's like, you know, we, I joke about the tarps and the bungee cords. I literally put bundles together similar to that. I don't like, I used to do grocery bundles a lot. I don't like doing grocery bundles anymore because I don't like personally, and this is like your results may vary, great opportunities in grocery if you can handle the um, stress of expiration dates, which there's lots of systems like uh, inventory lab has a good way of kind of keeping track of those things. And, um, you know, there's some things on Amazon where you can set something to expire so that they automatically remove it for you. I believe it's in the listing, um, or either in seller central. Um, I'm going to get some more information about that for you. Um, but the reality is I don't love to do grocery bundles because I don't want to handle the expiration date issues. Um, so I just choose not to anymore. So diversification, um, I would say the home and kitchen category, baby category, toy category, industrial and scientific. Um, and like, I mean, I really love to do like home decor stuff too. I mean, it's just, it sells and trends come and go. So you definitely have to bring new products to the marketplace, but diversify your categories and product offerings versus um, your business model. 
I think. Your business model should be solid. It should be steady. It should be something you can rely on and you're not walking around on pins and needles. When you're talking about retail arbitrage, it's just too scary and risky to bank your whole business on that. You could get one suspension that says, hey, intellectual property rights, IP claims, inauthentic claims, and then you have to worry about chasing after your own business. I don't want to deal with that. So I prefer wholesale bundles where I have proof of everything that comes in. Okay, Joy says, I purchased the Wholesale Bundle system in January. Thanks, Joy. I hope you're doing well. Um, I haven't started making bundles yet. Uh, is the course still up to date? Absolutely, yes. So uh, recently we added um, the customized custom packaging because Amazon started to require, in some levels, not every level, but Amazon started to require um, custom packaging for bundle brands. And so if you're creating a bundle brand or creating a bundle, it, it's one of those things where Amazon has um, said they want you to start including custom packaging. So we put a training in there for that. The GTI and exemption and UPC code issue has been updated and will continue to be updated as Amazon starts to change things. What you need to understand is I can't control the, the, the things that Amazon changes. What I can do is keep you guys updated. And if you follow the podcast and are listening on a regular basis, I try to give all the new rules as much as possible and make updates when they are appropriate. But yes, this was new as of last summer. So the course is really, it's, it's completely up to date. We finished it August of 2019. So it's, it's great. Erica asks, when creating a bundle with two different brands, do you just pick one to list under or do you list under your own brands? Do some brands not allow you to bundle and should you ask them first? Oh, that's like five questions. I think I'll give you one. <laughs> um, okay, so when you're creating a product with two different brands, you're, you're supposed to pick the highest um, selling brand first and put it under that brand. But they make sure that you can use a GTI and exemption or a UPC code with that because the reality is if you list a brand and it has you don't have a UPC code, you might have to list under your own bundle brand. Um, so you have to think about what that is and your results may vary depending on what brands you're putting in there. If you're trying to sell Nike shoes um, and you're trying to put, you know, Nike shoes with some, you know, laces or something like that, I don't know, um, you can list that, but then you're going to run into UPC or branding issues. So um, it depends on what kind of brands that you're selling. Um, some brands do and don't allow you to bundle. Um, you don't necessarily have to ask them first. Um, I mean, it's a courtesy. If you're getting them wholesale, then you know you want to let them know what you're doing with it. But if you know, if, as long as it's not a restricted item on Amazon, you don't really have to have permission to sell it. Um, it's only if they say no third-party sellers, no Amazon sellers, do not sell us. You know, there's contracts that you sign or you know things that you sign to get accounts with wholesalers. So if you're doing it that route, you don't need permission. Um, unless they say it's not Amazon allowed, or if it's a restricted product or in a restricted category, then you need to follow the Amazon rules regarding that. <clears throat> okay, if Danielle asks, if I create a bundle under my registered bundle brand that includes products and colors associated with college teams or professional teams, can I put those teams' names in my back end search terms if I create a bundle under that that includes the sports team logo? Okay, <clears throat> so, if logos are copyrighted and you're infringing on someone's copyright if you don't have permission to use their logo. So there's something there. Um, <clears throat> search terms and brand names and things like that when it comes to sports teams. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's, it depends. Like, um, you know, can you use NFL? Can you use the name Tom Brady? Can you use um, the Patriots? Can you use, you know, Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes types of things? You can, but how Amazon is going to treat that is depending on the category. Back in search terms, you can put things like, you know, this would complement your Kansas City Chiefs decor. Um, you know, hello, that's what I have here. Um, if you're using that and you're using these colors, red, yellow, white, black, um, team, use all the keywords that surround that product and that idea and on using it in the back end, I would try it. Um, I would try it not to spam it, but I would try it in the back end search terms. And if for some reason you're not indexing or it's blocking your listing, this happened to me before on an NFL product, um, which I was authorized to sell, but it was still blocking me and I had to, you know, submit stuff and ask for permission. So when it comes to that, um, I would try it first. And if you're getting blocked or if the rea if they're not indexing you for those, then you might as well take them out because um, it's not helping you. But there was a couple of things I had that were, um, they were, 
um, NFL type items and I wanted to use the team names and they were, um, they were not indexing for NFL. They were not indexing for that, but they were indexing for football and the colors. So um, making sure that you kind of sneak those words in there. Um, they're not restricted words. So I'm not saying to do anything wrong or bad. I'm saying try it with the team names first um, in the back end. If you put it in the front end of your listing, it's probably more likely to get blocked. So um, and it's, and making sure it's not copyrighted or branded. I mean, most NFL teams are copyrighted, but you can still sell their products on Amazon. So pay attention to that. You guys, thank you so much for your time, for your questions. I know I'm going to do another one of these uh, episodes coming up soon because I literally have four more pages of questions to answer for you, but I wanted to give you guys the answers that you needed to, to keep moving forward within these types of things um, to, to get you going on Amazon, to get you unstuck. So if you want um, more information about any of these things, you know, you can go to mommyandcome.com. You can reach out to me, leave a comment below this video, leave a comment and leave a review, whatever you need to do. Two things not to forget, mommyandcome.com slash jumpstart for the Q4 jumpstart class. And we have seats open and available for Vegas coming up in less than a month. So if you want to get in on in-person, one-on-one, training for wholesale bundles. I love our workshops. I can't wait to see people in person again. This is just so fun. Um, go to mommyincome.com slash workshop, grab your seat. There's only a few left. A few had opened up because people couldn't come. And so if you're ready and willing to come to a workshop in person and get your hands dirty, making bundles alongside me and everyone else there, um, go to mommyincome.com slash workshop and do that. I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.